my business data because I thought ADA was a very new language. So I'm not praising ADA because that's what my company is doing. And the other way around, I made a company of it because I thought it was a good thing. Okay? Uh, the other thing is that, of course, I, you won't, I won't turn you into ADA programmer during 45 minutes. That's a bit short. So I'll just give some examples and I insist on well, syntax, no we care about that, but on spirit and I try to show you what's different with the data of the spirit of data. There is plenty of, of documentation including on the web that uh, can uh, help you learning the language. So you hear a number of dates connected with Ada. The first book, the, it was named after Ada Byron, who was, uh, who is supposed to have been the first programmer in history. He wrote programs for the Babbitt machine, and uh, well, she could never run them because the machine never worked. But the, her programs were later recorded in PL1 and were right from the start. So the first program in history had no bugs, and the first programmer in history was a lady. Of course, we changed that. <laughs> so the first version of the language appeared in 1983, so that was the original language. And it was quite advanced. <coughs> it was mainly a synthesis of all the good ideas that were found in previous languages. For the first time that you had a language with exception, generics, and parsing together in the same language. You had those, fixture, those features in other languages before. Having them all in a single language was new. A big step was in 1995 which I did oriented object-oriented programming, uh, various uh, synchronization mechanisms, uh, of, of better organization of big projects. I uh, know that it was the first language standardized at ISO level. Oh. It was the first language, the first object-oriented language to achieve ISO standard three years before C++. There was a further improvement in 205, adding interfaces like you would find in Java or C Sharp, and improving existing features, increasing the library. And now the latest issue in 2012, I have the standard here, I keep it with me, but if you want to have a look, you're welcome to ask me. Brand new, just out of the press, I received it three days ago. And um, that made a big effort towards more formal, going more formal with uh, um, programming by contract and things like that. You will have other tools during the day for that aspect. So move towards more and more uh, provable and formalism. Since we are for them here, let me emphasize that it's a free language. What does it mean? First, it's an international standard. It doesn't belong to anyone. It has been uh, designed by independent experts from various countries. And it's entirely controlled by <coughs> It does not belong to anyone. And the effort around ADA was always very careful to have everything wide open. And you can see that this book <laughs> has been published by Premier. I have here a picture that I 
that's where I pick it up from that very much. And that says, this, that's from the copyright <coughs> the first page, this document may be copied in whole or in part, in any form or by any means, as is or with operation. Have you ever seen such a copyright notice on a book by Springer? <laughs> The ELA community was very insistent to keep everything very open. You have free compilers, you also have proprietary compilers. We are in an open world and we have competition. Many free resources on the web, so here are some pointers. Uh, maybe I should have changed those. You, you, you know the big size of moving depending whether the volunteer has time or not to take the site. So there are maybe not no more than just one. And you have news groups, you have many uh, rooms where you can find helpful people if you need any question, provided you are not a student who is trying to make your homework over the web. Why? Really having a problem, people will be happy to stop. Now, you may think that you've never heard of something written in ELA, just because generally you don't know. Uh, the TGV, for example, has many parts running on ELA. Uh, I don't have the picture, but the, the new automated line of subway in Paris, line 14 and now line 1, are entirely in ELA. There is lots of ELA for the A380, and that's a probe that landed on a satellite, satellite of some <coughs> planet. Yeah, some planet. It was a, a very successful tube, and this is the Envisat satellite, one of the biggest satellite ever launched by Europe. Mm -hmm. very so, what makes it different? We usually say that you use ELA when failure is not an option. You see that in everything we say, think safety. Checking. Checking is the important thing. Of course, <coughs> when everything is working, you don't need to check anything. But it's time we get rid of the old myth of you write a program, then you debug it, and then it works. We know that's not the way things happen. The programs are evolving, they are constantly new contexts and so on. So making them safe requires always checking as much as possible. However, uh, in a sense, data is very important for systems that are not life critical. Because life, life critical developments have lots of money to make sure that they operate correctly. If you don't have that lot of money, you better have two that ensure that your program is correct. So in a sense, it's more important to have a strong language when you are not doing safety critical stuff. Thinking, and well, I talked about that also this afternoon, but buffer, people are still <coughs> mourning about buffer overflow. That problem has been solved 30 years ago. There is no buffer overflow data, full stop, that's not possible. And uh, arithmetic overflow and one point of the are all detected. It's not a problem. <laughs> and more, what's important is checking at compiled time. When you try, when you start programming in ELA, the first thing you realize is that your program never compiles right out of the box. There is always something wrong, even if you're an experienced a programmer believe me. Uh, because the language is checking so much at compiling time to save you time at runtime, of course. Having a bug detected at compile time, it's much 
faster than having to, to find it at random. So having checks, having safety, needs a lot of rules that will forbid. So very often, people tell you, my hand is very good because it allows many things. Either people would say, our language is very good because it forbids. Because when things are forbidden, that's when you can check something. If your language allows anything, like C. C is made under the assumption that all checks are the responsibility of the program. And it's a very good language at that. But don't expect it to check anything for you. Everything is allowed, there is nothing. So, here is a small picture of Ada. And the basis is a very classical procedural language. It's not functional like list or deductive like uh, small tools or something like that. It's a good old language with statements, uh, variables, and things like that. It's based on Pascal. The, the requirements for the language stated that it had to be based, syntactically speaking, on some existing classical language. And all the, the proposals that made it to the semi-final during the selection process were based on Pascal. Because if you want readability, Pascal was the best basis to start from. Uh, independently of the rest, C, readability is not the best aspect of C. Okay? And all the C language, many things are just, many errors are due to stupid syntax choices in the beginning. On top of that, you have a very strong typing system, really very strong. Uh, what I mean is that the typing system <coughs> is the backbone of the language. Everything, every property is expressed in terms of types. So that's something you have to understand, and that's what makes it quite different, because uh, other languages like even Pascal, Java, whatever, looks like wiki type when compared to Ada and Wikipedia. So that forms the basis that supports everything. Then you have features that each support one aspect of software engineering. Packages support modularity. <coughs> there are the basic modules. It's funny that many new world languages do not have the notion of module. They have classes. Sometimes you use classes as modules. <coughs> but that's, a dif that's different. A class is quite often too small to gather all the aspects related to something in your problem. A, a logical module is a bit bigger than what the class can achieve. So we call that tidy. You have a bit of that notion with namespaces. But namespaces are not as well packaged as the package. Exceptions, now it's more common in programming languages, allow you to deal with every unexpected thing that can happen. And for instance, Ada has been designed, among others, for embedded systems. And when you have a rocket flying and there is a problem, you won't run after it, after it to press control as well. You, the software has to care for everything by itself. And the principle is that everything that can go wrong in a program give birth to an exception and that the program can handle. If you compare it to C++, for example, the philosophy in C++ is that the compiler should not introduce code that 
the programmer didn't try it. Therefore, if you have an arithmetic overflow, well, what happens, you know, depends on the compiler and the machine and so on. Because the, the language is not allowed to read an exception by itself. In ADA, everything is checked and if something goes wrong, an arithmetic overflow, even uh, if you call something written in some other language, you may have a memory violation. And then it's called by ADA as an exception in order for the, your program to be able to handle it. So that's runtime thing. Generates like uh, C++ templates. They're very useful because when you have strong typing, an algorithm that's written for a certain type may not work for other types. So it's a way of generalizing algorithms over a whole range of types that feature a certain number of problems. Tasking, multitasking, multi-threading, one. Uh, always, what always part of the language. It's an integral part of the language. It's not libraries outside of the language. The language has been designed with multitasking in mind. And it's very important because some, the fine way some features behave can be different if you have multitasking, you have to be very careful about some <coughs> uh, By the way, one of the improvements of ADA 2012 is active support for uh, multi cores and things like that. So that's just fresh. Uh, we'll have some talks about that, I think, during the decorator. And the goal is to support programming methodology, the rules here. You know, some people say, what's important is to have good design and programming methodology. Everybody will agree. Nobody will do it, but people will agree. Um, <coughs> And then they say, well, once you have a good design, we don't care about the coding language. To that, it answers, no. Why would you stop the rigorous, the, 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 the rigorous process when you come to the coding phase? We see the coding phase as going after the design, and if the coding Expresses the notions of the design, then any fault, any defect in the design will translate in a program that doesn't compile. That's very nice. Quite often I see people <laughs> in my office, well, we um, can't get that to compile a damn compiler. And, oh, wait a minute, you see the current version, you do and, oh, well, then maybe I made a design mistake at that point. And when they redesign it, they were right, right? Well, because you express the same notion, so if your design is inconsistent, the types will be inconsistent. Of course, it's no guarantee, but in practice, it happens quite often. Including, of course, the object-oriented methodology that I mentioned it was not well supported in the 83, but since with the 95, it's very Plus, the little dot houses that are kind of extensions to the language that are still standardized for special domain like system programming, distributed application, business, and so on. So these are complementary libraries, but in a sense that are not part of the language, they put syntax in those ends. All that makes something that looks very classical when you read it. Very uh, a very common language. But in practice and in the way you use it, it's much more different than than it seems like. Uh, especially, uh, for example, speaking of operatory programming, you may be surprised that there is nothing called class 
in the language. The reason is that it's a building block approach. So that's the difference between a plain model and Lego. With plain model, you have nice little pieces that are all made for a special purpose and that you cannot use for anything else. My kids had the prime mobile at snow with the people with skin and so on, and the circus prime mobile. There is no single piece from one box that you can use to play with the other box. They are perfectly fit for one purpose you cannot use for anything else. While with Lego, you have building blocks that have absolutely no interest by themselves. Depending on how you assemble them, you can get very simple things, or very sophisticated ones, or even this one. So, for that's why we you won't fight the, the class. If, for example, we need to put more like that in a design pattern using the various pieces that I shown in my little thing. So that's the syntax looks a lot like Pascal, I would say. With some improvement, for example, in a for loop, the C here is local to the loop. It doesn't, it's created when you enter the loop, disappears when you exit the loop. So all the bugs created by reusing a not so sure value of a loop variable after you visited the loop, it's simply impossible because you don't have a task. And there are rules in the language that make sure that it's impossible to change that, var that variable within the body of the loop. So if you see 4C in color, <coughs> which is type, then you are guaranteed that C will go through all the values. And without inspecting the code inside, you know that nobody will cheat with that. So it is formal proof. It gives you more confidence to what you are doing. Uh, here I have an if that you can write with else if. Uh, so you have a com structure. And you have the case statement, like the switch statement if you want. But the very nice feature of the case statement <coughs> is that when you don't have a, an other that covers <laughs> all other values, of course, then the compiler will require all values that are possible given the type of i to be explicitly given. And that's the main reason why everybody recommends using the case statement as much as possible. Because if you change anything in your program and forget <coughs> to make a change to some case statement, the compiler will tell you, oh, sorry, you missed a value here. Please tell me what I have to do. That's another very common case of bug that gets completely eliminated at compile time. It's very expressive. For example, here I have a matrix. I can give values of uh, belonging to an array type directly. That's how we write, for example, a two by two unit matrix. Or three units, that's important. Being convenient to write is not important. Being able to convince oneself that what is written is correct is very few times writing, but a lot of time reading and trying to understand. Also here, that's how you would make the start of a linked list. In the head, you put a new node initialized by 10,000 at its value, and the next is a new node initialized by 209, and the next node. You can describe the creation of a part of a linked list in one statement is not important, but directly you can read the global picture. That's what we call. You don't have to be uh, drawn into all the details. 
And oh yes, and it's especially important in the context of free software. Because free software means that your code will be read by thousands of people all over the world. Millions in some cases. So readability is, I think, even more important for, for free software. So what do I mean by strong typing systems? Here I have to define an integer type. We don't choose, except in some rare cases, predefined types like integer or long integer or things like that. Because it has nothing to do with the problem dummy. What you express in ADA are the types from your problem, not the types from the machine. So if you deal with the age of a person, you would define the type age as a range going, for example, for human beings, that's enough. Zero, two, and five. If I have the floors in a building with some uh, parking in the underground and some floors above the ground, I can define floor as a way going from minus five to 15. Fine. Then is the value that's acceptable for both types. That's why I can write that. However, if I write my age, colon equal, Simon is colon equal, I think that's all, colon equal my flow, the compiler will complain saying, no, my floor is of type flow, my age is of type age, it's not consistent. Well, tell that to a kid, he won't be surprised because they've been told for, even kids have been told for years, not to mix epoch and oranges. But it is the only language where you cannot mix integer types, where they are typed in the physical sense. And that can mean that finds also a lot of error from a compiled time. How many times do you confuse two parameters? You may have two parameters of different types. If you give them in the wrong order, the types do not match. And at first combined, you will have an error. But it's more important than that. It's a change of product. <coughs> Usually you write, you, you, you have machine level types, <coughs> bytes, ints, and so on. Normally, in the design process, when you have a high level type, like age, floor, and so on, you should investigate what the needs are for your type, and then do what is called a choice of representation. Which mission type will I use for that high level type? You are doing the mapping between the high-level type that comes from the problem and the machine type that will be used for it. The big difference is that ADA, in ADA you express your requirements at problem level and the compiler does the mapping to the underlying machine types, which has an immediate implication that you have no problem in moving from a machine to another one. If the underlying types are different, the compiler will do a different mapping, but since you expressed it at that level, <coughs> you just have to recompile it. That's all. And the compiler will do what's necessary. So packages are a way to express module is also a basic building block to put together things that are logically related. So, um, for example, here you would define that's what we call an abstract data type. You can define what's called in other languages as an opaque type, a type you don't know what's inside. That color, we call that is private. Here, for example, uh, fixed point type, also something that you rarely find 
in programming languages. So it says it's a value between 0 and 1 in a step of 1 over 2. I can define abstract values of that type. At that point, I still don't know what they are. And I can have things like a plus operation between colors, and I mix them, or a star operation uh, changing the density of a color. But since the compiler has to know the exact representation, you have a private part that tells the truth. But the user cannot use that. The package is protected. That it's impossible to make a use of that except in what we call the body of the package, where you will give the exact implementation for all the operations. So in a sense, we separate what we call the specification, the what, what the user of a package has to know to use it, from the how, how it's implemented, which is in part in the private part and in the body. It's a bit like having a dot H and a dot C. The main difference is that the dot H is a convenience, but nothing prevents you from not using the dot H and cheating by giving prototypes that do things completely different. In ADA it's all checked, therefore you have no way to go around the safety feature. And then, well, that's how we use it. So the goal is really to enforce abstraction, once again making the logical view separated from the implementation. Another thing that I what I mentioned now is that we that you have here. Every module that makes use of another module must name it in a with class. And this means that all dependencies between modules are explicit written in the code. What this means is that you don't have any external tool, like a make file, to tell what depends on what. In practice, the compiler will follow the graph of which clause and see if something is out of date, it will tell you, oh, that is out of date, you must recompile it. But of course, you have an option to recompile it automatically. Uh, in most cases, ADA programmers never use the, the compiler directly. They just say, well, it's a common variable, it's a that make or something like that, you know, and the name of the main program. It just compiles everything that's needed without having a make file. But it can be all needed from the source code. And frankly, how do you prove a make file? Well, it's a make file, right? A nice feature that is very complex in other languages are discriminating. Discriminants are a way to parameterize a data structure the same way as you would parameterize a subprogram. So for example, here I have a student record. Well, depending, first, people have different name lines. So I can parameterize here with the length, the name of people. And I can have var a variable structure, a variant here. And if the major is letter, the people have a great in Latin. If it's a uh, science, they are doing taking physics and chemistry, technology, drawing, and so on. And of course, all access to those all components is checked against the major. And if you are trying, if you are in sciences and want to pick up the grade in Latin, that will raise an exception. Only the proper structure is present, and that is If the different variants don't have the same length, 
they, they don't take up the same space in memory. The compiler is able to allocate just the right space for the variant you have. So the other really don't exist. So the discriminants, in a sense, are today uh, what providers are to support. How are we doing object-oriented programming? Well, we think that packages basically support encapsulation. Type types are special types that support you know, dynamic value. So that's when the building block approach comes in. A class, in a sense, is a encapsulation for us than any binding. So it's a design pattern with a fact type in a package. Typically, we have a package, like widget, with a type that carries on all the data of your object. And the method would be the operation, procedures, and function in the package that operate on the And you can derive and extend the data either visibly or even privately, like here. You can redefine the, the method you have defined here, and then you can have dynamic line. That's required for a particular program. A nice thing is that object oriented programming is in no way connected to point. In other languages, you always have pointers. Don't tell me that Java has no pointers. In Java, everything is a pointer, so you don't have to tell. That's slightly different. Uh, in Ada, you can have really no pointers in an object-oriented program. Because Ada, right from the start, had the ability to allocate things to understand whose size is not known at compiler. That's the problem. That's why the other languages always do pointer. Because with object-oriented programming, you don't know the type, therefore you don't know the size of the object. So you need, when you need to allocate, the need to have a model. In Ada, we don't need that. <coughs> Therefore, well, we often use pointer with the object-oriented programming because we need linked lists, trees, graphs, things like that. But we need pointer because we have recursive structure, it's not because of object-oriented And there are many other features in ADA, and details, that makes pointers much less necessary than in other languages. And that's a really interesting thing. Another thing that's quite original in Ada is that you differentiate the specific type from a class-wide type. What does it mean? Here, I have a usual inheritance tree with widget windows that are kind of widgets, pop-up windows, and pop-up menus, and various inheritance. In Ada, Ada is strongly typed. Therefore, if you declare a variable as a menu, it's a menu and it's nothing else. But sometimes you want to handle everything that's derived, that's belong to the class and the subclasses of menu. And then that's what we call a class wide type. Therefore, widget is only the widget itself. And widget <coughs> class is the tree of everything that hangs below widget. So we, di we differentiate between a node and the subtree that's defined by that node. So that was. Well, there are many things that could be said about that. But the main idea is that quite often it can enforce strong typing, even in a world where dynamic typing makes it difficult to enforce strong typing and strong typing. So for example, if I have a move procedure, 
that takes a rejected class uh, per liter, it means that this procedure is applicable to anything in that tree. But still, you have only one move procedure that can be applied. It's not a method, that's what I want to say. The method is when something like pin square each object in the tree has a different way, a different method for realizing the abstract fact. But here, a move is the same for everybody. Therefore, there is only one move procedure that works for everybody. And you are guaranteed that nobody will really find move doing something weird in some corner case. Note that uh, well, since ADA 205, uh, ADA allows you to use the usual notation object dot method. Some fields suggest mm -hmm. that it's sugar, but it's some very uh, uh, wanted that very strongly. So I did it in ADA. Interfaces were added also to ADA 205. Well, that's not really new. It just uh, it just means that the type may, like in Java, C sharp, may derive from one real type and as many interfaces as you want. So, for example, if you want to implement a persistence, then you would say that a persistent with node, you reject the window and persistent. So, okay, you can add as many interfaces as They're just a kind of abstract class with no data. And abstract or no support. A word of exception, as I mentioned, everything results in an exception in ADA, and every exception can be handled. So there is a good saying that says, once you've taken care of the unexpected, <coughs> take care of the unexpected unexpected. Okay? Because everything results in exception, you can always take safety measures. An example of generic, well, if you want to swap two variables, clearly the same algorithm, irrespectively of the type of the variable. Therefore, you can make it a generic about because I put generic here. And what's here is a generic contract. It says, give me a type, of course I don't have time to explain the syntax in detail, but what it means is that any type that has properties of a private type is appropriate. And well, that means that all you can have on such a type is assignment and comparison for equality or unequality. And then you create a uh, new procedure, swap H and swap H, which means you ask the compiler to write a new procedure here from that template, from that model, where you would replace everywhere item by H. So, in a sense, it's a bit like a macro, but uh, actually it's quite different because it's a logical substitution. It's not a textual substitution. You don't substitute character. You substitute a type by another. And a nice feature of ADA is that generics are compiled, and if the generic compiles, and you provide a correct type for the instantiation, then the instantiation is correct. You don't need to recheck the body at instantiation. That's a huge difference between ADA uh, generics and C++ templates, for example, where uh, the correctness is rechecked each time you make a new instantiation. Tasking is an integral part of the language. 
So, after you will have the presentation uh, about that in the afternoon, but I emphasize that it's very easy to do. People don't consider solutions to the to the problems within tasking unless you are really forced to, because in general, writing thread is very complicated. In ADA, it's just a data type of the other one, and it makes it very easy to have some little tasks doing certain uh, uh, side stuff in your project. Since you are working at high level, you may wonder how you access the low level if you need to. Well, you still work at high level. The idea is that for a given type, you can give what is called a representation clause or representation aspect, where you specify bit by bit how your structure is laid out. Then, you still work at high level using the regular stru structure and the generated code will be exactly what you want. That's an answer to people who say, well, I'm doing big twiddling, therefore I need a low level language. The solution in ADA is describe the high level language, describe the low level structure, Therefore, you can still work at high level and let the compiler do the hard stuff moving from the high level. Well, you can access memory. I see that moving. Yes. Well, we have five minutes. You can handle interrupt data. Well, everything can be done. But there is always something that forces you to make sure that it's quite feasible. You can slip things under the car. It has, you have to announce with the whistle or something like that, that in some ways you are doing some low level. So as I mentioned here are the annexes for various, uh, for various needs. And, well, what's interesting for free software? First, it's a very poor, really portable language. That the definition makes sure that it does not depend on a particular machine architecture. So, uh, don't tell me Java is portable, for example. Yes. Java is the least portable of all the languages. It works on only one machine on the Java machine. The fact that you emulate that machine and various machines is totally different in terms of language definition. The Java language works on only one machine and it's bound by the machine. But if you want, we have either compiler for the Java machine and even for the .NET uh, machine also. There is a validation tree that checks that all compilers implement exactly the same language. So uh, this is checked by all compilers and that it's a guarantee that they, are, they provide all the same language. <coughs> and those high level constraints protect you. I can tell you, I have developed several applications and many people here that I know have developed applications that are 100% the same code between Linux, Windows, and other operating systems. Uh, GNAT is a free compiler, and one of the very nice things is that you have very good error messages. And that's a real hack. Uh, for example, if you forget an S here, the compiler will tell you, oh, that's for a possible misspelling of that other part. It's not very clever. Or you <coughs> try to other languages, you can say, oh, no, in Ida, you don't try to equal, you try to common. That's very complicated. That saves you a lot of time. <coughs> Be assured, in the first time, strong typing is a pain, because you write things and it won't compile. Then compile. 
But in the end, you realize that it protects you from many things. And when you understand that strong tightening is a help, mm -hmm. then you are really for it. As we said, if you compile it for well, of course, you may have some logical errors. But when you compile to a far closer to the achievement of the world, you can interface with other languages. We have AWS, I'll talk about that by the end of the day, and many other useful tools that are available. And I'm going to conclude now. You might think at that point that I will tell you, well, you did. No, that's not I want to, what I want to tell you. You are grown up responsible people. I don't have to tell you what you have to do. So I won't tell you that. I want to tell you it's just, please, try it here. Give it a chance. The, the open source community is generally wide open. They like to try different things. So make your own judgment and make your judgment on trying the language. If you don't like it, fine. Everybody's different. I mean, that's not a problem. But many people simply never heard about it and just don't know what, how it could be different from the program. So try it. If you have problems, many people on the net will be willing to help you. And uh, well, we report next to you.